Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the step by step solutions to the textbook Microeconomics Theory and Applications with Calculus, the fifth edition by Professor Jeffrey Perloff. We have reached chapter 4 Demand. We will solve the first section about deriving demand curves from the optimal consumption bundles when the price of a good changes. You can review the topic before solving the exercises. The link to the introductory microeconomics course is in the description below. Let's look at exercise 1.1. Manufactured diamonds have become as big and virtually indistinguishable from the best natural diamonds. Suppose consumers change from believing that manufactured diamonds Q1 were imperfect substitutes for natural diamonds Q2 to perfect substitutes so that their utility function becomes linear. What effect would that have on the demand for manufactured diamonds? Derive the new demand curve for manufactured diamonds and draw it. In the indifference curve budget constraint diagram, the horizontal axis measures manufactured diamonds and the vertical axis measures natural diamonds. The indifference curves are straight lines with a slope of minus 1 because the consumers view them as perfect substitutes. When the price of manufactured diamonds P1 is higher than that of natural diamonds P2, the optimal bundle E1 is at the corner of the budget line that hits the Q2 axis. Consumers only buy natural diamonds. The demand for manufactured diamonds Q1 is zero. The corresponding part of the demand curve for manufactured diamonds is on the vertical axis of the demand diagram. The vertical axis of the demand diagram measures the price of manufactured diamonds and the horizontal axis measures the quantity demanded. When the prices of manufactured and natural diamonds are identical, consumers are indifferent between the two goods. The corresponding demand curve for manufactured diamonds is a horizontal line. When the manufactured diamonds are less expensive than natural diamonds, consumers spend their entire income on manufactured diamonds. The demand curve is Q1 equals Y over P1. For example, when the price of manufactured diamonds becomes P1 prime, the budget line becomes flatter and consumers choose bundle E2, the corner solution where the budget line hits the Q1 axis. We draw the corresponding bundle E2 in the demand diagram. As the price of manufactured diamonds continues to drop to P1 double prime, consumers choose the optimal consumption bundle E3. We can also draw the corresponding point on the demand diagram. By varying the price of manufactured diamonds while holding constant the price of natural diamonds and consumer income, we trace out the demand curve for manufactured diamonds. The demand curve has two kinks. Let's do exercise 1.2. How would your answer to exercise 1.1 change if the utility function is as follows, so that consumers have diminishing marginal utility of diamonds? Recall that a positive 
monotonic transformation does not change the ordinal ranking properties of the original utility function. It will not change the shape of the indifference curves. The marginal rate of substitution, MRS, is unchanged after the positive monotonic transformation. Suppose the transformation is fx equals e to the power x. Then applying it to the original utility function gives a linear utility function. So we have the same indifference curves as in exercise 1.1. The results remain the same. You can check the marginal rate of substitution, which is also minus 1 although the marginal utility changes. Let's solve exercise 1.3. Derive the demand curve for Q1, given the utility function. We need to solve for the optimal consumption bundle, that is, to find the quantities that maximize the consumer's utility subject to his budget constraint. In the first step, we find the tangency condition equation. At the optimal bundle, the marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal rate of transformation. The former equals the negative marginal utility ratio, and the latter equals the negative price ratio. Using the tangency condition, we can write Q2 as a function of Q1. P1 and P2. In the second step, compiling it with the budget constraint gives the optimal level of Q1 that maximizes the consumer's utility subject to the budget constraint. This is the demand function for Q1 in terms of P1, P2, and Y. Let's do exercise 1.4. David consumes two things, gasoline and bread. David's utility function is as follows. In part A, derive David's demand curve for gasoline. We use the shortcut approach to find the optimal quantity of Q1, which is the demand function for Q1. In the first step, the tangency condition is that the marginal rate of substitution equals the marginal rate of transformation. It results in the equation that connects Q2 and Q1. In the second step, we combine the tangency equation with the budget constraint and obtain the optimal quantity of Q1. This is the demand function for Q1. In part 2, if the price of gasoline rises, how much does David reduce his consumption of gasoline? We use calculus to find the answer. Partial Q1 over partial P1 equals minus y divided by 4 times p1 squared. If the price of gasoline rises by $1, the demand for gasoline falls by y divided by 4 times p1 squared units. In part C, for David, how does partial q1 over partial p1 depend on his income? That is, how does Davis change in gasoline consumption due to an increase in the price of gasoline depend on his income level? To answer these questions, find the clause partial derivative. The clause partial derivative is as follows. It is negative. Both the first-order partial derivative 
and the clause partial derivative are negative, meaning that the negative effect of price on quantity demanded becomes larger as income increases. In other words, when income increases, the price effect on demand becomes more and more negative. Let's find answers to exercise one point five. If Phillips' utility function is as follows, what are his demand functions for the two goods? Philip maximizes his utility subject to his budget constraint. The utility function is the quasi-linear form. From previous exercises, we know that. There could be interior or corner solutions to his optimal consumption bundle. Suppose the interior solution exists. We use the tangency condition to find the optimal quantities of the goods. The tangency condition leads to the optimal quantity of Q1. Substituting it. Into the budget constraint gives the optimal quantity of Q2. Notice that income Y must be higher than a certain amount to make Q2 positive. So we obtain the demand functions for Q1 and Q2. The demand for Q1 is independent of income. It is fixed. After the prices are given, the extra income is used to purchase Q2. In the second case, when income is lower than a certain point, the optimal quantity of Q2 becomes zero or negative. We have a corner solution. Philip spends his entire income on Q1. And the demand for Q two is zero. Let's solve exercise one point six. Draw a figure to illustrate the application: cigarettes versus e-cigarettes. That is, show why, as the price of e-cigarettes rises. People consume fewer e-cigarettes, but more combustible cigarettes. We can derive the demand curves from the consumer's optimal consumption bundles as the price of a good changes, while the price of the other good and income are held constant. In the indifference curve budget constraint diagram. The horizontal axis measures the e-cigarettes, and the vertical axis measures the combustible cigarettes. When the price of e-cigarettes is p11, the optimal bundle is e1, where the indifference curve is tangent to the budget line. The optimal quantity of q1 is. Q11, and the optimal quantity of Q2 is Q21. We draw the corresponding points of E1 in the demand diagrams for Q1 and Q2. Now, the price of Q1 increases from P11 to P12, while P2 and income are held constant. The new optimal consumption bundle is E2, where the consumption of Q1 falls and the consumption of Q2 increases. We can draw the corresponding point E2 in the two demand diagrams. We find that as the e-cigarettes price increases, the demand for e-cigarettes falls, but the demand for Combustible cigarettes rises. 
In the indifference curve budget constraint diagram, the price consumption curve is downward sloping. Let's solve exercise 1.7. A typical US owner of a home theater bought 12 music CDs Q1 per year and 6 top 20 movie DVDs Q2 per year. The average price of a CD was about P1 equals $15. The average price of a DVD was roughly P2 equals $20. And the typical consumer spent $300 on these entertainment goods. Based on this data, we estimate a typical consumer's Cobb Douglas utility function as follows. Draw a figure similar to figure 4.2 using this utility function. Explain the shape of the price consumption curve. It is a Cobb Douglas utility function. We can write the optimal bundle directly. If P1 increases while holding P2 and Y constant, Q1 will rise and Q2 will be unchanged. The graphs are as follows. As P1 falls from P11 to P12, the budget line becomes flatter, and the optimal bundle changes from E1 to E2. We draw the corresponding points in the demand diagram. The demand curve for Q1 is downward sloping. In the indifference curve budget constraint diagram, the price consumption curve is a horizontal line because the demand for Q2 is unchanged as P1 changes. Thank you so much for solving the exercises with me today. See you tomorrow in the next part in Chapter 4. Goodbye. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.